Alright guys, Hatchcraft back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And the Vegas Legion TwitchCon was the big discussion of a week or so ago, with Vegas kicking off against each other seemingly behind the scenes in their practice. Clayster reckons and has denied Nature's perspective that they're not really respecting each other internally there, saying that yes, it's all perfectly fine, they're talking to each other as they would expect to talk to each other, and that any potential team implosion possibilities are not going to be an issue for Vegas this season. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy, subscribe if you're as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. By the time you're watching this, the US-England match should be just about concluded, so congratulations to the USA on their great and highly deserved victory. Let's dive into things then here. First of all, actually, on the Los Angeles Grillers Academy, just um, from Exceed, 35-20 and 20 on a 14 streak. The coach apparently didn't even catch this stuff. But uh, yeah, this is the LAG Academy, not including Pristini. Just to note here, because Pristini last year, well, year before last, he was on the Seattle Surge as one of their players. Then he was on phase on their bench last year, did sub in briefly again top to give you guys remember that entertaining series and then this season there's some questions there because I thought he might join LAG as their sub makes sense Arsti's there potentially Bustini's twin brother comes along as well but that's not the case right he's not on their academy roster Joe Deceives is their full-time sub so I wonder what's going to happen to Bustini and also the Gunless and these guys because they're grinding through challenges but I'm not really sure what the situation is with them being a sub because teams are certainly taking their time here with signing substitutes I think even Thieves and maybe even Optic right their plan might be sign, sign Shane and and sign Rambo respectively, or maybe even Jacob for Thieves, I don't know, as their substitute for now, and then after the first events, then have a think about it, right? Which is a bit of a risky thing, just because you know, like, let's say one of their players gets unwell or something goes wrong, they might have to bring their coach in, right? Because I don't know if you can do a last minute thing, which you probably can, and they could probably get around it. But, um, yeah, still, the teams aren't committing a lot of them to substitutes just yet. They want to wait for the first major, they want to wait for the first Challenger Cup, which hasn't really even happened yet. Okay, there's been one cup, but the actual qualifiers for the prime, which are pretty important. They, um, of course, start relatively soon in early December time. So, um, yeah, they've got to make a call kind of quickly, but probably after Major 1, the teams are going to lock in their substitutes for the entire season and effectively wait to see who looks good in challenges, which is probably a reasonable way to do it, to be honest. Bit of drama quickly between some teams here, because the Clayster versus Scrappy thing was also kicking off a little bit as well. Rocker do the kind of if Cod League teams are Thanksgiving food, so, you know, it's kind of difficult to say because everyone has a different opinion on the tier list as to where they're like, Apple Pie obviously is good, so, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Heads, but people are going to have different opinions on the tier list and whether they're actually roasting a team or not this it will of course will come back to here but um i mean yeah so you know thieves get get the pie rocker get the mash which um i don't really know if that's like exactly what i'd want my organization to be i feel like there's some more premium versions they could have gone for there the subliners with the sweet potato casserole and then it keeps on going you know paris legion surge of the gravy and then of course ultra they've got that rivalry with with the crab resource but crab resource is fire so i don't know what they're talking about i'll continue to die on that hill but um and yeah of course they do the beans on toast thing it doesn't even look like this bread is toasted so i guess beans on bread but um yeah and even as ravens are like beans on toast and they've got no more material so unfortunate to the minnesota rocker and even ultra were having a go at london or at least london were having a go at ultra last night so not only have ultra released their own jersey right a couple of days ago but also they've got more merchandise i mean this is a really well done like announcement video here so yeah fair play i mean look obviously los angeles thieves they have the reputation as being the hoodie org and of course nature tried to play that down over a couple of years but no, we're not just hoodie or guys. We're trying to win. We actually care more about winning than you do. And that was the whole thing between Hastro and Nature. Because Hastro was meant to be on the winning organization. And then he was like, oh, Nature, you just sell hoodies, this type of stuff. But um, honestly, like Toronto are kind of taking over right now in terms of the quality of their stuff. It looks really good. That they've done a whole collection here. And, um, you know, we can see this particular image here. We'll have a close up in a second because Methods has a few words on that. But um, yeah, and then Ravens are roasting them when I'm an expensive mid merch competition. And my opponent is Toronto, like at an LA Thieves aren't having such a good time and then you know there was a bit of a back and forth there because apparently they promoted their jersey in London's replies and still got fewer likes so I always find this beef between the organizations to be semi-entertaining so we'll see you next season if that continues over but uh, yeah Ravens aren't making many friends right now the issue is for Ravens is that they can talk trash on Twitter but um, if their team can't back it up it's not going to be looking so good quick note on Toronto same thing for Ravens these are the jersey prices we saw the jerseys the last few days we believe that on Monday that's when the final three jerseys for Paris 
we'll see about that one. Okay, Vegas, Legion, baby, and um, an Optic and New York Subliners are going to arrive. So we'll see if they're any good. But um, this is what it looks like, right? If you try and order these from the UK, you're going to pay like 30 quid in shipping. It's like, come on, lads. There's got to be a better way to do this for fans outside the US. It's like um, they've tried to pretend for years that this is a global league, but you really just can't. I mean, I think even the hoodies, it's outrageous if you want to. The shipping on those, like the taxes and what happens when you order stuff in the US in the first place is a bit of a mess. But if you're from the UK, you've got to pay 50% on top to the jersey price because of the shipping, right? So Ravens are looking into trying to fix this. But of course, Toronto also kind of have like, um, you know, some sort of European heritage on that team. There's also Minnesota in a similar boat. So yeah, I don't know if they're going to try and figure out a way to do this, but they've got to they've got to find a way to actually be able to manufacture these in different countries and not just have to get them shipped out from the US every single time. Quick note then on the Scrappy versus Clayster drama. So, you know, Methods treats this out at the Scrappy. Scrappy comes to the replies and Clay calls back, why is your head so big? And, um, and they do, oh, Scrappy says, why do you have grey hairs? So this kind of continues from the other day. We saw when Scrappy and even Standy, right, both on the Toronto Ultra now, were talking to Clayster about being greased up, being too old. And Clay was coming back and saying, oh, Scrappy's a bit of a weirdo. This guy has no respect for a three-time world champion, one of the greatest careers in Call of Duty history. This guy's not even played a pro event yet and he's already talking trash. So the banter this season between Clay and, you know, the Vegas team and also Toronto is going to be good fun. I'm just hoping that Vegas are actually somewhat competitive because, like, the rivalries are going to be really fun in theory between Clay and even Temp and some of the other teams in the league here. But if they can't back it up with any performances, it's going to be kind of frustrating. And Toronto should be good. Like, Toronto, most people's power rankings right now are certainly in the top four range. And that's, um, that's impressive to me. Look, they've obviously got the talent on this team. The question was whether they put it together in terms of personalities and team culture and chemistry in this type of stuff, especially with Marky B going so far behind the scenes, it seems like that's okay. But that's also been a key complaint about the Vegas Legion, right? We saw not long ago now all these clips coming out from, you know, Theory having a few words to temp, temp clapping back and saying, oh, you know, just get off. It's time to call it a day. Clay, you know, speaking in a certain tone of voice, let's say, to temp and the other guys in the team. And the question has therefore been raised, will Vegas just absolutely implode at the sign of things going wrong? So far in a kind of almost 3 AR meta we currently have, their team is set up nicely, right? They've got Clay and temp. It's an AR focused team, really. And the ARs are the dominant weapons. So they're doing pretty well in the current meta. It makes a fair bit of sense. However, if things start to go wrong, will the team implode it from within? We've kind of seen that happen with Temp to a certain degree last year when he was kind of wanting to get himself dropped and the way he was talking to some of the players on the team maybe wasn't so aligned with having great results. And we saw this clip the other day we shared in a video where Najot was discussing uh, the Vegas team and saying, yeah, he tuned into a stream with kind of Clayster and Temp and the way they were talking to each other, he was like, yeah, he just feels like there's passive aggressiveness there. He feels like the way they're talking to each other isn't really the way that you need to on a good team. And they just been out of a team environment for many years. You know, maybe things had changed to a certain extent, but still he was playing when these guys were playing, right? Back in Advanced Warfare, when they just retired, Tent was around. Clay, of course, was still around and he won a championship with Clay back in the day. So his perspective was that he could feel like there was kind of an undertone of disrespect really within the communications at Vegas. And we've seen some clips that are lying to that. However, Clay said disagrees. He reckons that, you know what, it's about having respect for your teammates and if you do you can talk to them in whatever way clay's an og like that right you know back in the days with um, for example you know complexity even with aches and stuff like the way they would talk to each other i'm sure in scrimmage is kind of crazy and modern day pros might not get that necessarily but clay and temp know how it is they know how they can talk to each other and try and bounce ideas off each other and not feel like things are going wrong and clay reckons that nature isn't really right on this and he talks in a different way to tj and pro loot and even hydra last season because he doesn't have that same rapport with them built up the entirety of feedback delivery if the person you're giving feedback or criticism to doesn't respect what you're saying then it's never going to work no matter how you say it if you say it in a calm voice or an angry voice right mm -hmm. there's only a certain amount of people pat is one of these people in the call right now we would genuinely give feedback so direct and brutally honest on complexity but that's how we operated because we knew it was just for the betterment of the team we could talk to each other a certain way all of us and we all understood that it was only for the betterment of the team it comes from a place of trying to get the team better right mm -hmm. And what Matt is saying is like, yeah, we're, we're showing you streams in the first couple of days. We're also playing that up like crazy. You know, streams have been off the last two weeks and we've had some like deep conversations speaking to each other like this, right? Right. And, and so it's like, you got to understand it's all entertainment. You know, anytime in the middle of a game, people are giving feedback. It's coming from a place of frustration. Like you just got broken or you f***ed up a rotation or someone didn't call out, right? And you're pissed you died. That's what it comes from every time. And of course, in the moment, it's going to sound heated. It's going to sound disrespectful. But if everyone's on the same page... And With Don, I've known Don for so 
along and I know we can speak to each other like that. We've chilled in so many different settings. I know we can talk to each other like that. I do not speak that way to TJ or to Byron. I deliver the feedback to them in a much different way. But yeah. like those kind of conversations was and even theory to an extent. Like there was a lot of stuff about the coaches and like and, and him and Don kind of going at it on stream. But like dude, their history goes back further than one month, right? Like that the game has been out. Like they mm -hmm. played together all last year together. Like they obviously are comfortable speaking to each other like that like they have a closer bond than anybody on the team right now you know like yeah. so it, it's just about who it is how you can speak to them and if it's okay to do it and so, like there is some people you can't right like you can't yeah. speak to everyone like that like yeah. i couldn't talk to paco like that right when he first joined the team like he would yeah. just shut down right and it but just depends none of us what do you guys think about this right of course like clay is not going to come out and say oh yeah it's chalks guys like you know i really hate this dotty temp guy i really feel frustrated with him behind the scenes and yeah theory as a coach just has no power like he's obviously not going to say that he's going to be on the side of that what they're doing in the team is good and makes sense and probably he does you know fully believe that but we saw plenty of clips coming out and you never really know from a one particular clip moment and um, as we said it might make more sense for some of these teams to just mute their communications between maps so that we don't hear this type of stuff but nonetheless there were plenty of clips arriving and um the temp versus theory thing was definitely kicking off and as clay said he reckons that temp and theory and theory the coach of the team they've got that relationship built up over a few years and they know how they can talk to each other which is fair enough but sometimes it didn't always seem to be the most productive of conversations but nonetheless what do you guys think about vegas then because clay reckons no big deal none of these kind of um you know potential communication chemistry problems are going to occur the thing is it's not exactly been a new thing with temp and clay's teams where when things can go wrong, the chemistry doesn't always work out. There's some big personalities, of course, on this Vegas team that might well clash if things start to go downhill. While they're doing well, I think it's not really a big deal. And the coaches the other day had Vegas fifth in their power rankings. Very tight, of course, in this eight here that we saw. But, um, you know, Vegas are a team, according to the pros in the current state of the game, that could potentially challenge to a top four placing at Major 1. That's probably their way to go. I don't think that Vegas will improve over the year. I think that the start of the year is their best chance to have a good result and then as time progresses they might need to make some changes but um look still if they start out strong this is the concern i think if you're a legion fan and want them to actually have a bit of a revenge story this year is that they probably will start out okay theoretically they should they're obviously a good team right now like the coaches basically had them here in the 80s so they should be at least a solid like you know solid to upper solid kind of team right now but um if they go from there and then you know as we might expect optic improve subliners maybe improve lag might make a couple of tweaks and improve like um you know Vegas might drop down the order over time and if they go from a good placing at the first event to then a lackluster placing at the second event then how quickly do things kind of you know internally fall apart that I think is the question to me right now it's probably okay as close to says but in time does the coach have a good enough hold of that team and a hold of the personalities to make his kind of thoughts be known because yeah I don't know that was the talk was temp disrespecting coach theory and also like how much well credit does theory have with Clayster right because Clay doesn't really know theory that well not been a relationship that had in the past like um is clay not kind of the lead figure of the team as opposed to the coach right really the coach needs to be the number one guy if you want the respect to be there but if clay's the number one guy or even temp is the number one and number two guy over theory then that's where things can go wrong if the coach doesn't kind of command that respect within the camp as we've said on other successful teams having you know big personality coaches they're actually respected by all their players so i guess it's just one to keep your eyes on and see how things progress quick note on standy as well because he was kind of the other piece right of this whole scrappy and standy versus this close to drama so I let him talk but don't say anything so we shall see about Stanley because he needs a big comeback season this year on the Trons Ultra and so far he's been looking pretty good maybe he was just like an anti-Vanguarder and Vanguard was, wasn't his game because Cold War was certainly his game and speaking of Toronto I thought this was kind of spicy just to close out the video here with from Brack right I talked about Brack yesterday because of my fantasy team Brack is only four dollars for the mutineers I thought I'd put him in I'll leave that link down below in the description box for you guys again if you guys want to get involved in fantasy for major one but there's quite a long time to still get your picks in so wouldn't get too stressed about it but uh, yeah Brack a four dollar pick good player back in his day also was on Toronto at the start of the franchise era in modern warfare he was on Toronto's bench basically because they built that 10-man team Brack was one of the men on there never got his shot in the starting team though because they well found out in the end that well the, the way they wanted to go was not having Brack in the roster so he eventually went back to the pit for a couple of seasons fought his way back to the league and wants to beat Toronto right because he's thinking you know what they back in the day they could have brought me in could have made 
made it work with me and the team, decided not to kind of set his career back a couple of seasons, arguably, and now he's looking for revenge. So yeah, Bracken, Florida versus Toronto is going to be an exciting prospect, and Brack had his fair few battles with Scrappy as well over the last couple of years in the pit itself. But very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.